This is a tougher gospel to understand than most, in, in my opinion. There's a man born blind, Jesus heals him on a Sabbath, and they both get into trouble. As I'm sure many of you know, there's always more than one thing going on in a, any particular gospel story. But one thing that is certainly happening here is the age-old debate about rules, exceptions, and expectations. On the core level, Jesus does a plainly good thing. He heals a dude who's blind. That's good, obviously. And surrounding that core action is the issue about whether or not he could do that on the Sabbath. So the action itself was good, but maybe the circumstances were not. That was the argument of the Pharisees, if you recall. And Jesus' counter-argument is making it plainly clear that said circumstances changed very little of the core goodness. And then, on a totally different level, the question was asked whether Jesus was even who he said he was. Can the facts even be verified in the first place? So I say again, this is a story about rules, exceptions, and expectations. What really matters? How must we go about it? And on whose authority is it decided? Good questions, of course. And Jesus makes it clear. True goodness is more important than rules and laws and structure of our lives. Rules and laws are important, make no mistake. Do not think that I'm advocating anarchism or anything like that. It's simply the understanding that goodness takes priority over other matters and doing the right thing will occasionally get you into trouble. Now the exact situation of Jesus and the man born blind is no longer a major issue in 2020. I'm sorry, but very few people really care about whether or not to do work on the Sabbath. Tons of people work on Sundays, including practicing Catholics. That is life as we know it now. But as Catholics, we are called to do our best to honor the Sabbath as best as we can. And sometimes that means doing what we can before or after a mandatory Sunday shift. But like the man born blind, you just might see Christ more clearly as a result of that Sunday labor. So hear me and hear me well. This issue is alive and well today. As Americans, we are constantly getting bent out of shape over rules and regulations regardless of the basic goodness of whatever it is we're doing. <laughs> the Pharisees of our gospel stories were not extremists. They were examples of a kind of thinking that is ever-present in every era and every culture. They are examples of a kind of thinking where, frankly, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Because what good is a rule if it, can, if it can be easily broken? That's the question. What are rules? How can they be broken, if at all? To be sure, I have a few people in my life who believe that laws and regulations are the very height of morality and justice. The best thing you can do for someone is to protect their rights with good legislation. And of course, with that mentality, it's not much of a jump to conclude that that legislation cannot be challenged or superseded by anything else. And the people I'm thinking of that think that way, 
they would have gotten along splendidly with the Pharisees of this gospel reading. In fact, one person specifically comes extra to mind. Um, she was an American that I met in southern France. Um, a friend of mine in college was a foreign exchange student in Aix-en-Provence in southern France. Uh, a friend of mine and, and myself, we visited her and we, we hung out with the other people in the foreign exchange program. So this person, you know, I had freshly met them. Uh, we were all just hanging out, talking about life, as 20-year-olds are wont to do. And she made the sincere argument that you can't really help anyone except through politics. Laws, policy, legislation, that's the way to make the world a better place. Needless to say, I wasn't sold on the argument. I don't see the world that way. But while I think she was on the extreme side with respect to her faith in the political system, she wasn't crazy, she wasn't illogical, and she wasn't unreasonable. She simply considered legislation to be life's greatest virtue, and that's, that's not really what we learn from Christ. Today's gospel is Christ's take on exactly these matters. Rules may occasionally be broken for the sake of a greater need. If our action truly reflects the love and the ministry of Christ, then we should undergo that action with confidence that God's grace is upon us. So our takeaway today is a simple one. Christ calls us to focus on what is really important and to not get too lost in the details or circumstances. So as you continue on with your Lenten sacrifices and efforts, remember what is truly important during this time, preparing ourselves as best as we can for the sake of fully experiencing the salvific celebration of Easter Sunday. For after all, Everything that we do and believe is centered around the great mystery of the resurrection. All roads, as they say, lead to the empty tomb of Christ.